Hey everyone, so today we're going to talk about something that drives absolutely everyone that wears glasses of any form, sunglasses, prescription, non-prescription, whatever, completely mad when it's a problem. And that's glasses that are just constantly slipping down your nose. Nobody wants to deal with it, especially bigger prescriptions. It can be a real problem because it <laughs> kind of affects how you see everything, right? So let's take a look at some of the things we can do about that today and kind of what the real cause is there in most cases. Now, first of all, if you've been here for long, you know the drill, hit that button, ring the bell for the notifications, like the video, all that good stuff, because it keeps the content coming and it keeps me happy. Because eh, I love doing this, believe it or not. Anyways, so what we're gonna focus on today, as I mentioned, is the glasses that are constantly slipping and sliding down your nose. It's a lot of different things that are causes. I've seen a lot of different marketing products, I guess we could say, that are really just band-aids of some form to either add more friction on the nose or to kind of change how it fits behind the ear without actually changing how it fits behind the ear. We're gonna take a look at some of those. One of those I actually don't have on hand if you've seen or heard of Nerd Wax. What that is is essentially just a friction enhancer that goes right there on the plastic frames so you have more grip here. Ultimately, that's not what causes slippage, but it, it works, so who can be mad about that? But as far as the actual fit, in most cases, it comes down to behind the ears or the overall balance of the frame, especially with stronger prescriptions where the lenses are making the frame very front heavy. It's a little bit more difficult to get that sorted out and stop that problem. So one of those solutions is these little silicone things and you buy them on Amazon for just a couple bucks. I mean, I think it's like five bucks for a box of a whole bunch of them. These are not those. These are fancier, nicer made. And ultimately, it's the same goal. Whether you pay twenty dollars a pair or five bucks for fifty of them, the same goal, the same idea. With these amounts here, is they slide over the tips of the temples, and they're not the most fun thing to get in place. And they're especially annoying on larger, thicker frames because I've got the smaller ones, so that when they get up here, they actually hold in place. But what these do is essentially mimic the curvature of what the frame should be adjusted by. It kind of throws back to the old cable temples. If you remember those, it wrapped deeply down behind the ears. And you'll see, once we get this in place, that is exactly what it does. So the way that works is it is a soft little silicone piece. So it's not going to hurt necessarily, but it's just that when you actually put them on, let's take a little bit more effort. Put them on, you can see it's got so much pressure, it's actually pulling this frame in there. But you can see it's really, really darn slow right now here. It's a little bit of pressure right back here once that's in place, but you can just about to rip them off with that in place when it's done right. I see that, but when the frame is properly adjusted and done right, I don't think that's the case, anyways. And what it amounts to is get that back off. There we go. So, with the beam being in the right place, I'm actually off the shelf just because of the right place. So, you know, it's not, I can't just grab a sling like before with tons of force. I can actually put enough pressure to make this one slide. But for the most part, you know, it's just normal wear. And see, just a little bit of jar attacking. This is really pulling the front forward. It's because that bend is actually where it belongs. The frame is nicely balanced. There's a good fit on the bridge of the nose, so that pressure has got a lot of area. Again, friction modifier. So if you've got that pressure spread out over a nice large area, it works good. Now, the one thing I will say, I did mention that third wax stuff early on, because as a friction modifier, it does the job well. It really can prevent some troubles for frames, especially as I mentioned the higher prescription that's really front heavy. To have that extra grip it needs to just stay in place on the bridge of the nose, especially if you're like me with a really oily nose that just doesn't want to cooperate anyways. Now, on to what these guys here do. One thing I like about a frame like 
this, it's fairly thin and not so lightweight. These are a thing of sheet metal, not on the front. But they go a step further, and the rear, the tips here, are actually made to be really easily adjustable. There are tools specifically designed for adjusting the curvature behind the gears. They're not inexpensive, they're pretty proprietary. You can really only see them in optical supply chains, so they're not easy to come by. About 40 bucks a piece, 30 inch ish, something in that ballpark. This is more for adjusting the location of those pads to adjust the balance of the frame if we need to raise or lower to get anything in front of Now, this though is incredibly useful for those stubborn to adjust frames, unlike this guy that is super easy to get by hand. And I'll tell you, a lot of electricians have trouble with their hands and fingers because we just like to do this. We like to use our hands to fill the adjustment. Stuff and I can see this going very bad very quickly on this one. Anyways, this simple bend, very easy to make, you know, even with old tired hands, very easy to make that adjustment. It's really cool. But this one has steps for how sharp you want that bend to be. Now, I'm not going to get into too much to that, but typically you do not want a very sharp bend. I honestly use that very far end once, but then you know, usually if I need that sharp of a bend, it's really easy to get that just by turning the finger the other way. <laughs> this is what it is. I can't help that I am the way that I am. That's just what we do. Now, as far as that overall fit, though, typically what you want to shoot for is the frame to be well balanced. And a lot of people don't even talk about that. I've done a video that does get into a little bit more of that proper balance of the frame because it is possible in adjustment. So for that, we'll link that video up separately and get that taken care of. <laughs> Sorry, I had my mic down there. Oh, losing it today, guys. But what it amounts to, the short version, is that it is a little too complex to throw in the balance of the frame into this video. It's not something that I can talk about in two seconds, and it makes sense. So check out that other video. I'll throw up a card in the top so you can get to that one pretty easily. I'll also throw it down in the comments below. Now, one other with the plastic frames, they're not quite as easy to make the bends in as well, but these will mar them up. So then you've got a tougher situation and that's why you'll find these guys here do most of the work. And that's why I'm in the habit of using my hands for most adjustments, because obviously I work with a ton of plastic frames, it's the majority of what we do. Occasionally, you will come across a frame that it just, no matter what you do, the fit is so far off that there's nothing you can do to get it in place, whether it's just a mismatch of shape overall for your face. And by shape, I mean the overall length, width, all of that sort of stuff that really just doesn't let it balance out in the way it should, or you know the temples are super thin all the way back and you just can't get quite enough clamping force without causing it to hurt, or in the case of some of the flexible frames, to just push itself off even worse than it did, which is a reason I'm not a huge fan of the flexible frames. They're like giant springs for your face and they constantly push themselves forward and it's wonderful. It's not wonderful, nobody likes that, don't ever buy those. But with the plastic frames, it really comes down to the overall style of it, the way it's made. This one's very similar to what I'm wearing, where it thins down here at the back so you can make those bends a little bit more easily. With the plastic frames, at least the really good acetates, it doesn't take a ton of heat to get them malleable enough to properly adjust. Honestly, a full day of wear gets the majority of the heat required. You wear a frame all day, it's gonna be closer to body temperature, you're in that 90 degree range a good acetate is gonna adjust well in that 90 degree range. The cheaper the material, the higher you gotta heat it to really work with it because it's just not great and it's not fun. But like this, I've been wearing a couple hours. I'm not bending this when it's perfect. You can deal with it. But <laughs> it's just easier to work with. This one's been sitting on the table for a while. You know, it's pretty tough. And more importantly, if you go bending these things straight up cold off the bench in the morning, it's very easy to crack and break them. And you don't want to break your favorite glasses and it's not a huge issue, but it's not exactly the most fun either. So as far as that, I do mention it's not a huge deal. And I say that not because it's not good to break your glasses, 
but because what typically happens if you do go to make that bend, say the frame is too old or it's really old, the material's brittle, you'll get a subtle little crack that just pops up from there. So, you know, it's not going to catch on the ear. Sometimes it can rub and irritate a little bit on the back of the head, but it can be filed down, smoothed out. Yeah, not, not a huge, huge deal. It's not really seen in here, so it's, it's a bad time. It doesn't feel great. It makes you feel bad about yourself, but it's not huge. The world has ended up broken my glasses, but now let's talk about a whole different kit altogether. Good old bayonets. So this is the American Optical Pilot. This one is way too small. I can't even use that as an example. <clears throat> On average, we'll go with the middle size. Besides, gold and green is impossible to go wrong with. But these are designed to work with headgear. So most of the clamping force in these is going to be from actually headgear. But fortunately they've designed it in a way and you'll see that's why these things are so darn thick back here is so it can have a wide area. Remember as I mentioned earlier it's all about friction and clamping force and that comes down to in this case that's all you've got is friction and clamping force. So if there's not enough friction here and there's not enough friction here they're going to slide all day long, and you're going to be looking at people like this, which, hey, maybe that's what you're into. I can't stand when glasses are down there. <clears throat> so these, you can see, it actually follows the curvature of the skull, digs in at the back, and flip that up, you can see it very easily. It's got that nice, gradual arc to it, so it grabs into the head as it goes back. So it's not slipping off, but the great thing is, because it fits up so nice and snug, you've got, say, your head here, here, and it's really weird to try and talk on the cord like this but that's putting extra pressure here keeping glasses from slipping off that's their intended function most importantly it's also really easy to take on and off with the helmet on these are great for you motorcycle guys because it just slides under the helmet that's what it's useful for you can adjust most frames to work in a similar way but they're not going to have quite enough clamping force to really grab on and stay in place You'll notice I've put on 10 different frames and none of them are slipping off of my face. So I have chosen carefully the ones I'm using for this video. Because what would the fun be if you were watching me deal with glasses slipping through the entire video, right? I might have to find one that does that just because. I used to have one that did. I don't even know where it's at anymore. I lost it. TikTok video slung across the room. It was great. It was terrible. Anyway. I don't think I've seen them since that video, actually. <sighs> yeah, anyhow. So, back to friction on the nose. I mentioned earlier for the acetate frames, you use the nerve wax stuff or whatever to increase the friction on the bridge. Well, what can you do if you've got the standard silicone or hard acetate nose pads, like in the case of these guys? Well, if you have an oily nose like me, that doesn't particularly work because that material gets ridiculously slick. It's a pretty small contact area to begin with. So you've got a few different options. There's actually different material nose pads made. You've got other silicones that are a little bit more tacky, so they really grab onto the nose well. You can get those in larger sizes. So again, more pressure, more area, more grip. And more grip is what you need if things are beginning to slip. <laughs> We made a new brand today, guys. Deal with that. Enjoy it. <laughs> the, the no slip solution because when you have slip, you need more grip. God, help. I'm throwing this one on because I mentioned it is really too small for me, but you'll see this one actually does slip a little bit more than the other. That gets back to what I was talking about, and the material actually has a little bit of give to it. So, what happens in that case is pushing out here, the whole thing acts like a darn little spring in that case that slowly pushes itself forward. So that's not particularly fun either. All right, well, you sports guys are going to notice this one. So that is one of Barnet's sunglasses. A little bit nicer. It's a nylon frame, which if you know anything about nylon, it's practically impossible to adjust. There's no metal core inside. There's no anything to bend. This guy, they shoved a metal core in right here, and it goes out the back, and it is actually super easy to bend and adjust. It really takes very minimal effort. 
a lot of your sports sunglasses are going to have that if they're in a nicer category. I haven't seen too many do it, but they're out there, and that's kind of the main point, right? It exists. It's in the world, and it's wonderful because it's easy to work with. If it's easy to work with, you don't have to worry about breaking it if you're the one messing with it 7,000 times a day. Ideally, kind of what I want you to take home from this is the slipping glasses can be an easy fix, but there are a lot of different things to keep in mind. So as I always say, if you're unsure about it, find a professional that knows what they're doing and can get it fixed for you. You don't want to break your glasses. And you don't want them sliding down your face all day long. And any of those things does not end well, so you have people like me that can make it. Hopefully not a problem. I have had two across 12 years that I could not get to stay in place without some other attachment. Incidentally, both of them in the last year. Go figure. That's all I've got for today, guys. Let me know what you thought about this video or if you've ever had that pair of glasses that just constantly slips and you can't do anything with it. What'd you do? Did you throw them across the room? Did you give in, throw in the towel and get a different pair? Let me know. I'll catch you guys next time. See you then.